Ladies, would you do us the honor of introducing yourselves to our our listeners uh, as we get started with this podcast? (laughs) Excellent. Of course. My name is Christy Snyder. I am one of the co-founders of Kennedy's Rosary Project and the mother of Kennedy, who um, came up with this wonderful idea so many years ago. It was the inspiration. Absolutely. Uh, my name is Liz Tamarkin. I'm a dame in the Order of Malta. I live locally, and I'm also a co-founder of Kennedy's Rosary Project. Awesome. All right. So we're talking about Kennedy's Rosary Project here, and um, I've gotten to the to the point where I forgot what I'm supposed to do with the next step, but I've already made uh, a rosary. And what have you done today, Matt? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't made a rosary. That's Slacker. Sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think I'm remembering now. Let's see if I get this right. Got to make that our father. I Glory know be. That. Yeah. Oh, that's the one. Right. I got to do the extra. Right, two, right. two wraps with both strings. Yeah. Now, I, I must admit, this is the first interview we have had where it also came with an activity. Well, that's true. you're missing out. We like <laughs> yeah. being unique and being yeah. the first for things. Yeah, we've yeah. not we've not had an act, a craft. <laughs> <laughs> Whole new area for you guys. It's yeah, fabulous. Really is. Great. This is about as crafty as I get also. Um, so I'm, uh, but it's very meditative, uh, right? It's very it soothing. It really is. Yeah. All right. So, Christy, could you tell us a little bit about how did the Kennedy Rosary Project come about and how's Kennedy doing? Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Um So Kennedy is 23 and doing very well. Um, When she was two, she was diagnosed with a spinal cord tumor. And so as a result of that, she had surgeries and multiple follow-up MRIs every three months. So because she had a spinal cord tumor and there were flares in her brain, her MRI was an hour, 45 to two hours. Um, in time span. Mm. So she needed to um, do something with herself. And she was not an anesthesia kid. She hated the anesthesia. So we weaned her off of that as soon as we could, because that was another battle. And so she found the most consolation and the most peace when she brought her fun rosary beads from Christmas Eve mass into the MRI with her. And um, after a few tries with those, we found out that they were actually leaving a shadow on her scans. So she could no longer bring them in. Mm -hmm. And thus the idea for Kennedy's Rosary Project was born to... Those rosaries, did they have have metal in them? Were they wooden? Uh, what, What was it that was causing the shadow? They're, they were plastic, so we thought that they were fine, and that's why they allowed her to bring them in. But the finish on the beads had a metallic um, residue mm. on them that caused that shadow. Okay. All right. Sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. So no. Then that takes question. us to? <laughs> then that takes us to a lot of friends brainstorming um, prayers in Lourdes. I, too, am in the Order of Malta and a Dame of Malta, and so on a trip to Lourdes, was praying in the grotto, and the idea came to me that we would be able possibly to make a rosary that would be MRI safe that we could bring into MRI centers across the country. Mm. And um, then through recruiting great friends who have amazing skills like Liz to help make this vision come to life. Um, but I, you got to you got to add in the Holy Spirit part of this because yes. I just love that. First of all, Christy asked for this in the grotto, right? And and you know, someone who lives in the next town over, I had to go to France to meet and, and you know become a dear friend. <laughs> oh, you you didn't know each other yet? No, mm-hmm. don't you love how that happens? Yes. Um, but then you see the footsteps of the Holy Spirit here. So Christy is the person asking. Um, another friend went up to the Eucharistic conference up in was it Montreal? I don't can't remember Quebec somewhere around there. Um, so she was learning about this up there. At my school at St. Teresa's, we were making rosaries with beads, but they had this knot between the decades for kids in Haiti. Uh, and then Jen Mitchell was doing um, learning about the Rosary Army. So all these different places. Jen Mitchell, we should call friend of the show also. Yeah. Uh, yeah Absolutely. Big time, big time yeah. She's definitely show. in front of the show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, but, you, you know, you saw the Holy Spirit just pulling all these pieces together to bring this about, which was just beautiful. Um, and it became something that was really important to all of us. 
Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Here's a sample if you want to see where you're going next. I don't know if you remember. I got to uh, learn how to do this. Yeah, you do. Yeah. It's really fun. And super relaxing. Yeah. Yeah. Have you gotten schools involved with this? Yes. We so, have. Yeah. Yes. So the youngest uh, age that we've uh, comfortably taught is third grade. Okay. Um, but people love it all the way up. I mean, I did have some first graders learning, but they were very determined. Um, but it goes all the <laughs> way up. And, it, and for youth ministries and youth groups, this yeah. is fabulous. When we when we go to the summer, go to summer at Lords, the kids make hundreds of these, and then they share them with the Malads that they meet there. Hmm. Um, and and one favorite story from this year, we were we were working the trains because we work for the hospitality when we go. And a train was coming in where the Malads had been on the train for 25 hours coming from the bottom of Italy. So they couldn't move. They couldn't do anything for this train. And our kids were running up before they helped the folks off. But when the train was just arriving and meeting them at the window and giving them the rosaries, wow. and it was beautiful. Um, and when we got to see them off like two days later mm -hmm. for that same ride, they were on the train longer than they were, you know, in Lourdes, which was crazy. <laughs> That's amazing. So these not rosaries, uh, what is the what's the material? What are we working with here? Um, I'm coming to the end of my of my rosary decade here. I'm very proud of myself. And uh, Matt is still just sitting over there doing nothing. Come on, Matt. Uh, I just want to point this out to our listeners. Matt is doing nothing. <laughs> I'm working the roadcaster. <laughs> I haven't touched it yet, what, but I'm working it. <laughs> we are using number 36 twine. So number 36 twine. And it's um, made of nylon. Nylon. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that that's an important component. Now- Anybody could pick this up. Do they have to like order it through Kennedy's Rosary Project if they want to contribute rosaries or anything? Because we need to come back again to how this all came about to be called Kennedy's Rosary Project and everything else. But first, I'm just looking at the craft. It's in my hand right now. <gasps> this is live and, and happening. And, yeah. and we don't often have live happening things happening <laughs> on the tangent. So. This is it. This is it. Um, well, you can get this many places. Many online providers offer this. Um, and, and some folks use different different thicknesses of the twine. But um, if you just look up rosary twine online, you're going to find where to get spools. Now, they okay. come in spools, mm -hmm. but then we turn them into these candies because this is portable for you to take. We call mm -hmm. them candies. It's everything you need to make one rosary. Um, but later on, we get to talk about jobs of making this done, you know, turning this into spaghetti or, t you know, the twine pools and then somebody making it into candies. Mm -hmm. um, there's lots of different things that people do to be mm -hmm. part of the ministry, which is fun. And okay. packaging. Yep, and packaging. Packaging is a huge, huge piece. Okay, so before we get into those special weeds, uh, <laughs> there's still more about, about how this, this all came about. So you have Kennedy uh, having now plastic rosary beads that are causing a, sh a shadow on her scans. Um, and so we've got to figure out something else that, that can go into the machine with her. Yes. So with all of the people that the Holy Spirit pulled together, we were able to come up with a way to make a full rosary. And we started out with a full rosary um, with a cross constructed of knots so that we could have it without any metal. That was the huge component was many crucifixes were added that were metal mm -hmm. at the end of these otherwise MRI safe rosaries. So we were able well, Liz was able to figure out how to construct a cross. I think it was you. And, <laughs> and with that puzzled look, it was definitely you um, who was able to figure out Take how credit, to Liz. create it's, it's yours. the cross okay. and to teach others how to make the cross. So we would make a full rosary. Now, after some time of making full rosaries, which was seven yards of twine and 40 minutes each, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it became clear that not only was it not sustainable, but sometimes even in your decade, Father Samuel, you'll, you'll figure out that you maybe went a little too aggressive on your spacing or you left more than six inches at the start and you're not able to fill, finish out your rosary, but you can take apart a knot or two. Well, that was not the case when you were knotting a full rosary. And so often on the plane ride to Lord. I had a bag of all of the full rosaries that didn't make it to the end. <laughs> and I undid the knots and redid it as penance prior to going to the <laughs> So after a while, Liz's mom, Hope, was um, instrumental in coercing us to consider doing a decade instead. And mm -hmm. if we did a chaplet, that that would not only be more manageable to make, 
there would be less degree of error mm -hmm. and also less movement in the MRI itself because it's smaller. So going mm -hmm. through the chaplet is less movement than making your way through a full rosary. Sure. So it was a win um, on all accounts. And that's how we made it to the present form that it's in right now. So you started, did you make the first ones? Did Kennedy make the first ones? Oh no. So Kennedy, because she has a spinal cord tumor, um, ha doesn't have use of her right hand. Okay. So knotting is actually very difficult. She can make the first 10 knots, mm. but after that, she's not, she's not very good. My son, Nate, is actually very good at rosary making. He can do the first 10 and finish it out, and he can help finish out whatever she didn't finish out. But I think Liz was the first one to make a full one because you got taught us all how to do it. Mm. Yeah, but I think Maureen was also Maureen, learning. And, and yes. yeah, so, there, you know, different people came together. But um, I I learned crafts growing up. My mom, Pope Carter, she taught us sewing. She taught us knitting, all this stuff. So mm. you, you begin to learn processes and figuring things out. So once we learned what we were doing, we decided on which version it was going to be. Then we just started doing the methods and then, you know, just sharing that out. So the more people who know how to do it, easier it is to teach new people to do it, right? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So with that, that original diagnosis at two years old, did you see a dramatic change in your Marian devotion because you got involved? I mean, not getting got involved. You started, right? Kennedy's Ros Rosary Project. Oh, absolutely. From the moment, you know, I went to Lourdes, I was definitely 100% devoted to the Blessed Mother. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it was a practice that we had prior to going to Lourdes. Right. So it, it pre existed. It pre-existed, okay. um, but definitely was solidified from that initial trip in 2005. Was that the first trip that you made? It was. Wow. So it coincided, the two of them, I see. Okay. My first trip was back when I was in college. Um, so I, I had gotten to go there, you know, mm -hmm. before, but um, but going later on as auxiliary and, and as a dame for Malta, that, that was a very different experience. And... Uh, it's very powerful to be there because every every time you go to Lord's Mary has a different little gift for you. It's something right. in your life, right? You're yeah. you're nodding your head That's and laughing. Very true. She has a little something that you need in your life at that time. Could you give me some examples? Meaning, like, I, so I've never been to Lord's. Yeah. Um. He's, and he's like he's he's looking to be convinced that he should. Go. No, no, uh, <laughs> no. It's not coming from a skeptical he's, place. He's very um, convinced that he should go. We'll, That's we'll talk about sure. Marlene Watkins in a second. I, I yeah, pretty ah. much every every guest that's ever come on the show and mentions that they've been to Lords. I pretty much asked them to take me. Um, <laughs> and no, no one's brought me thus far. I'm just saying. Um, of course, it is an international trip. Um, so I guess my hopes are low for someone else paying for a trip for me. Um, <laughs> but nonetheless, everybody comes back with the same experience of, well, you know, Mary gave me this. Um, and so I just find it incredibly interesting to say, well, what did she give you, you know? Um, and you're saying, you know, that... that that gift seems to me to have been Kennedy's Rosary Project, and which which is like the gift that keeps giving, right? Um, but to my understanding, you've both been there how many times? Like probably what? close to twenty. Okay, twenty twenty each. I, 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 Christy's different. I, I go in the summer; she goes in the spring. I think I'm seventeen. Right. Okay. So double digits. Um, looking at a goose egg over here, but <laughs> but have you received gifts each time? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I mean, they're very personal, so I'm not necessarily going yeah, you know, to share them. <laughs> but like yeah, the first yeah, time yeah. I went as an adult, like mm. past college, it was right after I'd gotten separated and was in a divorce process. Mm. I was a very broken person. And yeah. just the gift there was just consolation of being held. I went to say thank you. But what I really realized there was just how much God had been holding on mm. to me and, and, and keeping me afloat during the, you know, very yeah. terrible time of my life. Yeah. So, um, but uh, yeah, they're, they're, they're all different. All the gifts are very different. And, and, you couldn't guess what it's going to be. That's that's mm. not that's not possible. Would you agree, Father Sam? I think so. Yeah. There's there's stuff that you don't expect, and there's there's realizations, and sometimes it might be something that happens while you're in prayer. It might be just meeting somebody while you're walking down the street. Mm. It's there's so many different things that that are happening, uh, and that yeah, the the memories of it come back too. That that sometimes you don't realize that it happened until you're home, and then you think back on on some encounter that you had. 
uh, and and just the way that that's transformed things. So it is it's a it's a powerful moment. Um, what are some of the gifts that you received? Uh, one was very simply realizing that there's there's a first of all there's a, a need for for a, a priest's ministry in so many different places and and often that a uh, a priest ministry is accepting that people want you there so like i had this experience when i the first time i ever went to the lords I, I was a newly ordained priest mm -hmm. and uh, i was waiting in line to go into the into the baths Right, and I got in line in this this volunteer. I, I, I talked about this with Marlene Watkins. Yeah, when she came well, on. but you you, Mar you Marlene didn't touch wrote on this, this particular yeah, part of it. So, but Marlene wrote this this book, Everyday Miracles of Lords, um, and it's it's a really it's a great book. Um, anyway, so I I was standing in line, and this volunteer came over and said, "Father, come with me, please." And I said, "Where are we going?" He said, "Well, I'm going to take you take you through." I said, "Well, I'm I'm in line. I'm I'm good here." And he said, "No, Father, come with me." And I said, "No, no, I'm I'm good." And he's Father, come with me. <laughs> you are not in charge. Yeah, Let's exactly. Go. And so he took me out of line, and and he walked me like past the line. And so I'm very embarrassed walking past the line, like all these people who are patiently waiting for their turn. I'm like, I look, man, it's it's my own fault for getting here at the time of day that I got here. I'm good to wait in line. He goes, No, Father, come with me. And he brings me up through the line, right up in front of all the other poor people who had been waiting. So I'm like just taking a spot here. But the the little waiting room that I end up in, you know, that ante room before you go into the baths, um, I was sitting with very visibly sick people. And the man sitting next to me had tumors that were visible all over him. And he turned and he started talking to me. And I realized why I was there then. And he said, this is great. I've never been able to be here with a priest right here with me. And he talked about how he had come to the Lord so many times, and he knows that he's not going to receive healing himself, but now he comes so that he can pray for people who won't get to Lords themselves. And that's why he was there. And so here's this man who's very sick, who's excited that I'm there, in, even though I'm feeling bad about cutting the line and, uh, you know, watching all these poor people waiting, <laughs> you know, <laughs> just like feeling really bad. But I realized one of the, one of the graces was realizing that sometimes a priest's ministry is not that he actually did something, yeah, said something presence. that was wise. It was, yeah, he was there. And to receive that was was a very a very uh, impactful moment. Did that shape the rest of your priesthood? I don't know if it shaped the rest of my priesthood because I still struggle with that idea that yeah. people actually want me around. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible. <You> know? <laughs> well, there there are times where you're like, I I don't think I really belong there, and they're like, No, Father, we, we want you to be here, and like it, to to be receptive to that is is an important thing. But another one that that really got me that same trip, yeah, that same trip. Uh, I ended up running into some uh, American college students uh, who were on a pilgrimage there, mm -hmm. and so they had they wanted to go to to mass, and they came to mass with me, and then they asked me to like lead them on the uh, stations of the cross on the hill, yeah. and so we did the stations of the cross together, and then they asked me to join them for the procession. So I'm like doing the rosary procession with them. And that was really beautiful. And then during that same trip. <laughs> The one mass that I was going to be able to get to in the grotto that was scheduled was a mass in Spanish. And there's a huge group from Madrid there. And I'm looking at this group from Madrid and I see a man in one of the, um, what do you call the? Voiture. The blue cards? The yes, the blue cards. Voiture. Yep. Okay. So he's sitting in, in his voiture. What is a, what is that? It's like a big cart. Um and like a, a volunteer pulls the person who's who's in the cart. So like they're sitting oh, up oh, like right. Okay, it's I like see. a very 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 big wheelchair. <laughs> I see. Yeah. And this is someone on their way to to the water, to the grotto. Well, just, uh, just to when get a around pilgrimage and, comes, and, oh, that's just, how they sort of right. around yeah. if they're okay, not okay. in a regular wheelchair. Yeah. So I see in the crowd. I see this man sitting. And I'm like, I think I recognize him, and I realize that it was a guy who uh, the the missionaries of charity in Madrid had in their shelter. And I spent a summer working with the Missionaries of Charity in Madrid, and I, I knew him from there. And so later on that night, uh, I was walking past this the same group again, and it was like in this in this moment, my garden angel just grabbed my head and turned my head to look to the left, and there he is sitting there. And he looked at me, and he said, cowboy. Because <laughs> <laughs> that was what the guys called me because I was American. <laughs> and I like he recognized me right away, and we, we started to talk. And then he said, did you see, you know, this other guy's here too. And so I went over and said hello to him. And it was like this five years before I had, I had met these men 
and spent the summer with them. And now I got to like reconnect and that was, that was really special. Um, so l- like little gifts like that mm-hmm. are, are something. I, I will share one. There yeah, was, please. there was one year that I was there and, um, there's an international party where all the different associations kind of come together of Order Malta because they're all there at the same time. I see. Here. Um, and so we were at that evening, which you wouldn't think is, you know, a spiritual time, right? You're, you're at a social gathering. Um, and I was with somebody. All of a sudden, I turn around, the person's gone. And there's this gentleman in front of me. And I'd seen him around. And his ministry, because he asked God if he could save his daughter from her drug addiction, he would then go around giving out miraculous medals. Mm. So that's what he does. Um and he's there and he's he's offering me the medal. I said, Oh, I have mine. It's you know special to me. And I said, and I said, You remind me of my dad. And he's just like, Oh, really? And and I had lost my dad and we didn't get to say goodbye and all that kind mm-hmm. of stuff. Um, and he's like, Well, he's right here. You, you say goodbye now, you can give him a hug. And it just I did, and it was just wow hugely relieving and helpful and oh just beautiful. And I never saw him again. Um, it was just one of those moments where, you know. It's it's just grace. It's just a gift. Yeah, that's that's eerily so similar to the idea of like the priest's ministry is just to be present. It's kind of a version of that, you know, where you got to be in the presence of your dad again. Yeah, it was cool. It was awesome. that's amazing. I mean, there's there's just such a such a beautiful history there. You're walking around, and you just can't help but feel the generations of people who have come through to pray, mm. and you you can't help but feel like the presence of God while you're while you're at Lord's. Um, I've never been to Fatima, but I've already decided that Lourdes is my favorite. I've been to Guadalupe <laughs> twice. Lourdes is my favorite. There's you clarity. Know. It's all the same lady. So yeah. that's true. That's you know, of course, it's it's, she's yeah, okay it's with the blessed that. mother. <laughs> but there is a certain clarity that you get it, if that's the grace that you mm-hmm. receive. It's that you don't second guess yourself. You you know what's going to happen. You are just the instrument in which things are happening. But it's that release and that ability to trust. And um, it's a really special feeling. Mm-hmm. So coming off of discovering that these knot rosaries made out of, was it number 36? Nylon twine. Nylon twine. Mm-hmm. Uh, that these knot rosaries will, will be okay. They won't cast a shadow in the MRI. Um, how does this turn into such a big project that we're sitting here talking about it today? There's a need. There's a need when people are going to have an MRI for them to have security, to feel safe, to feel cared for, to feel loved. And also their family members who are sitting in the waiting room waiting for them. It is a very stressful situation that they're in on both ends. And this this gives them peace. This gives them an opportunity to connect with the Blessed Mother, with their faith of a tradition that maybe has fallen by the wayside, or they remember that mm. their grandmother did this or someone else, but it it revives those feelings of safety and calm. And um, there is such a need for it. And not only in the MRI centers, but when we were going to Lourdes many years ago, um, we used to use World's Airlines and they used to transport soldiers to Afghanistan after they brought us to Lourdes. Mm. So we would leave the camo colored or brown Mm. these or these, um, you know, other camo colored rosaries on the seats of the plane so that when the soldiers got on, they knew that someone was thinking of them and caring for them and praying for them. And everyone who makes them, we are praying as we're nodding. And so- Especially if you have a knot, you have to tie like four times because it just won't come out right. You know that person (laughs) just needed those extra graces. We did, we did. Yeah, Um, Yeah. but it is really awesome that, you know, we're offering this up, right? We're we're making these these pieces and, and so many people do this and you can do it anywhere, right? I mean, if you if you can't be out serving because you got little kids at home or whatever, this is something you can do or you're elderly or whatever. This again is it can go anywhere. But um you just don't know where they're going to go. Mm. So you you're making them and you're and you're putting them there wherever the hospital is or MRI center or whichever. And then Mary's giving them to who she needs them to get to. Mm. And every once in a while we get these emails from folks just sharing their experience with us of of what this has meant. Um and it's really beautiful. It's humbling. Mm. 
you know, to just, you know, realize that you don't know what this is for, but you know Mary does. So it, it, it just kind of gives you a chills to just be part of that, even if it's in a simple way. You know, somebody's job is to package, right? It's simple, but it, it can't be done without them. Right. So it, it's, I love mm. that part of it. Mm. How you, many have you given out? If you like, if you were ballparking it. So we were guessing about 10,000 a year and we started in 2005. Oh my God. So that's a lot of rosaries. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. And you might notice I've stalled out on, on mine. because You need your crossbar? I forget how to make the cross. I think you no, want to so do I, one more One more there, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. I was thinking about that as you were talking. I was like, I'm missing one piece here. Yeah. I need the top of the cross. <laughs> yep. It's perfect. Just a four Z is good. Yep. yep. Um, okay. See, it's been a while since I've, I've made mm -hmm. these. The other thing about these is awesome is you'll be nodding them. Say, I remember nodding them random places like in line at Walmart for something, or whatever. And someone will ask you what you're doing. And, you know, you tell them and then they share their story with you. Oh, my son's leaving tomorrow. He's being shipped out. And you're mm -hmm. like, well, this is obviously for you, right? It it, it, it causes yeah. conversations, um, which is beautiful. Although um, if you start taking out that lighter to to fry the ends and, and seal it up right in the Walmart shopping line, they might get a little upset. I, I tend to give it to them <laughs> and just tell them how to finish it. I, I don't tend to finish them then in that case. I do that as well. Two yeah. weeks ago, I was on the train coming home from the city and the conductor was having quite the day. And he was in a mood and saw me nodding rosaries and asked what I was doing. And I'm making it for him, right? I said, absolutely. He asked if I would be done by the time I made it to my stop. And I said, I will. Please come back. So he came back. And sure enough, I was done. And I handed it to him. And he was like, wow, I can't believe you just made this for me. Yeah. I was like, absolutely. And now let me show you how you can finish it because... Can't pop out the lighter <laughs> right, on the train. Right, right. Just yeah. although I think it real upset. Smoking, right. you know. I feel yeah. like Hope Carter just doesn't care. She She's just, just going to do she it. She will finish that. I'm yeah. not actually on the train, but yes, she just has the stuff with her. Um, but yeah, too funny, too funny. <laughs> oh man. Um, yeah, and then that, that's awesome. And then you know, sometimes you're just standing there, and all of a sudden you're teaching someone to knot. You know, so it, yeah. it it very easily kind of passes on. In the summer when we're working there, everybody in the baths is then learning how to knot. It's awesome. One From of the anywhere in the world. But that was one of the great joys when I, when I went with the the high school students for their pilgrimage trip to Lourdes, and that's where I learned how to do this was in the in the hotel lobby. Mm -hmm. They were teaching us. I wish that we learned in the airport though, because we were waiting for. Uh, we were one of three groups coming in, and so two groups arrived. And then we had a nine hour oh my. wait in, in the airport yeah. for the next group to come in because we all had to go together. So we're waiting for all this time and it was just deadly you'd be happy and to know they start from their origin airport now they start in I, new york because there's folks who know so they can help people get going that's right great away. i would i would have loved to have had that in my back pocket because it would help yeah. really pass the time tremendously. <laughs> it's a fun way for them to connect and get to know each yeah. other right well and everybody when we leave the hotel in the morning had at least two or three of these um candies uh with them so we had the string we had the the yarn uh the twine rather that we were going to need so that while we were waiting, because there's a lot of waiting when you're volunteering in Lords, mm -hmm. you're waiting for the event to start. There's so that as, as you're sitting around waiting for, for this event or that event to start, you just make a rosary and then maybe finish it up later when you get back. So we did that a lot. It was a fantastic experience. That's awesome. Yeah. That waiting experience is another, there's a lot of opportunities for waiting in life. And so if you always have a couple of candies on hand, you can always make a rosary or two during that time and just take it as a sign that that's yeah. what you were meant to do. That's why you're waiting. Yeah. How many hospitals have you put these rosaries in at this point? That's a good question. Some of them are active and some of them, are inactive. they go inactive depending on who, because you have to have someone to bring them there, right? To make that connection. So currently we've got um, Greenwich, Stanford, Norwalk, Bridgeport, Danbury, there's two in in um, Bridgeport though, St. Vincent's and yeah, St. Vincent's um, and Bridgeport Hospital. And then we've got MRI Center Southbury. We were at St. Rayfield's, but I don't know if anybody's up there right now. We've been at John Hopkins, Yale's Mental Hospital has reached out to mm. us for rosaries, mm. um, which is beautiful because they said they said these are safe for our patients, and we're like absolutely right. Um, and generally, when a hospital reaches out to you, we just you know we will start by giving them like a hundred, hundred and fifty. And then the box to display, but somebody there needs to just refill that box and then let us know when they're getting low. Um, and then we're able to do that. And then we have, you know, Spanish and English. So sometimes they're needing different, different ones. Um, and then for the Ukraine, we actually had the prayers. Somebody translated the prayers 
to Ukraine and then Ukrainian and then we we sent them over. Wow. So how many did you send over? Ah, uh, I don't even know. 450 maybe. Wow. Um in in different batches, but there's yeah. a parish in Bridgeport that uh, is basically Ukrainian and and they got involved with that which is excellent. You know, so that's awesome. Yeah. Fantastic. I love it. All right. So then uh, you get some feedback every once in a while from from folks who have benefited from this, who, who write about it. Uh, is it the people themselves who are going in for the scans? Is it their family members? Is it a mix of both? Who's who's finding the, the greatest fruit as they're as they're receiving this? I think it's a mix of both. I mean, there's mothers who are going in with their child for a follow up on a cancer diagnosis. There's um other people that are the patient themselves who have found consolation in bringing the rosary into the MRI with them. But also there are some that maybe had that initial experience with grabbing one of our rosaries and bringing it into an MRI and then continued to pray on it to the point where they needed a replacement and they've reached out and shared that theirs has run out and they they need a new one. Um, so we've had a, a lot of And then of you get some individuals that always want to have some on hand to share with people. And honestly, it's really consoling when, you know, you're chatting with someone and something's going on in their life to be able to give them something that, you know, will give them consolation, right? And, and, and you know, connect them with Mary. Um, so we have folks sometimes who just reach out for a batch of rosaries because they like to have them. And, and some of those stories have been beautiful, just the cancer patients that they've connected with and and... And even some folks have cancer, like to bring them to the centers so that when they're waiting and talking with people, mm. you know, they have something to yeah. share. So it, it, it can be anybody. Beautiful. That That's amazing, right? That now they're, those people who are sick and are going to the hospital are turning that sickness into an opportunity for ministry, mm -hmm. right? Like that's the transformative power of this ministry, that it's taking what, I mean, it's got to be one of the worst things ever. Right. To experience this or to have like a loved one that is this sick and to use that for the Lord is. It's powerful. Yeah. All right. So once I make this S yep. to get the crossbar, yeah, now you're what am I flipping to... around here? <laughs> I love that we keep returning to the craft Actually, in real time. Go I mean, well, it's this, a that, uniting that factor. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It Do is the, the whole... Kennedy's okay. Rosary Project way. It is. Oh, I sweet. And then I just slide that up. Just quickly, leave it around a little bit, though. He put out the S. Like, that was perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Father Sam, you're a natural. Well, I've, I have I did spend a lot of time on this um, while I was in Lourdes with, uh, with the high school kids. And then uh, I was chaplain at Trinity Catholic where Matt was a student. Mm -hmm. And so- was this, was this at Trinity at some point? Uh, I don't think it was ever at Trinity, no. Okay. But what I did was I, I got a whole bunch of the a, a whole bunch of this twine and I started making full rosaries. Hmm. So you said seven and a half yards? Yeah. I don't remember wh what I was doing, but I was like just full arm's <laughs> length and just like pulling and pulling and pulling and trying to get as, <laughs> as much yarn as I could so that I could until I figured out how yeah. much it was going to take. Um, and then I would I would make a full rosary and I was just doing this and I, I kept I kept doing it. And I think I made like a hundred full rosaries out of twine because we didn't have any rosaries at Trinity and I didn't have really? any money to like buy brand new ones. I'm like, I'm just going to make these. So I made, I made yellow and green no rosaries. Way. Yeah. So I had a whole bunch of them in the school and then I, uh, I found the camo color like this, this shade. And I was like, Oh, I like that. So I, got, <laughs> I, got, I got, I got some of this stuff and I, I made a couple of camo ones and I, I had one of the camo ones sitting out at something. And one of your classmates, I can't think of his name, uh, but he came through and he saw that and he goes, there's a camo. I said, yeah, and he goes, can I, can I keep this? I was like, yeah, you can keep it. Awesome. <laughs> this is not a kid who I would have expected. Right, was like right. going for a rosary, but he was like, this is so cool. It's camo. And he just like, he loved it. Yeah. Um, so anyway, it, it worked out really well, but this, this experience of, of like making these while waiting for, for the Malads, for whatever our service was going to be was, was tremendous. And then seeing that this was going to, um, this was going to benefit people who we would never see. I think that's the other really, really beautiful thing. All right. From the time that you began this project and started sending them out, how did you get people involved? How did you, how did you spread the word about this? There were many ways. I mean, Lizzie is very talented and started up a website, which was instrumental in helping us 
send people to somewhere where they could learn and follow up because you could learn with us while we were nodding. We grabbed people's attention and we could teach people one-on-one how to do it, but to have the website to follow up as support um, was huge and really helpful. We also host regular monthly rosary nights. So we grab people together. It's something that's obviously nice to do in partnership with others. And it doesn't take all of your attention where there isn't time for for chatter and connecting right. on other levels. So yeah, you, as evidenced by this podcast. I, say, I think the two of you have managed to produce like five each at this no. point. I've, I've barely made it through my one. Matt is still sitting pretty at zero. My, no, I, oh, he's got one. He's got I mean, one. I didn't make this one, but I picked one up. I, I think it takes about making three of them to start to feel a little bit fluid and comfortable. Yeah. Um, and then eventually it, it, you just get into that rhythm and you just go, which is awesome. Um, How else do we attract people? So uh, we were very excited. And when you're excited about something, you're telling everybody. Um, and, you know, automatically the places we were already involved, we shared it. Like I was I was at the school and, and we had started um, Miracle Workers. That was our, our kids social group after Katrina. Mm. Um, so then the Miracle Workers were making them and, and just really anywhere, the Order of Malta and then um, anywhere somebody had a group, we would go and we would teach. Um, we've been to where over we went to St. Bernadette's in Westchester. We were teaching. We went we've to taught St. the Knights Rose. of Columbus women, you know, just all sorts of kinds mm. of things. But um, so the website has printable directions. It has videos on all the different segments. Um, it's got PDFs. So it's, it's a very basic website, but it's got all the tools on there. Um, and then, you know, I even did it with a challenge when I was teaching with my kids. You know, what can you learn from the Internet? Mm-hmm. So I gave them one of these guys and, and the videos, see if they could do it. Um, it is always nicer to learn from somebody. But when you can't, mm-hmm. it's nice to have a backup at least. Um, and we're always nodding. Yep. We go to Lourdes, we're nodding. Um, I'm nodding in the grocery store, waiting in line. I'm on the train. <laughs> and so people do see yeah. you. If they choose to tap you and see what you're doing, then... It's an opportunity yeah. to share. And it cracks me up that you're teaching people you don't speak the same language as either. <laughs> but we're still doing it, right? We're still right. doing it and they're figuring it out. We're, we're going. So we we were leaving one day from Lourdes, but they hadn't finished the crossbars. So my new friend, Christine, in, in France, who's also Italian, um, it was her job to kind of get everybody finished up on that. So it was it's fun. It's fun. You did it! Ta-da! Yay! All right. Now, now that I remember the crossbar a little bit, I'll probably need some help on the second one. You, know, you want to make me one or <laughs> pick a fun one? I think it's time for you to learn. Uh, but all right. How does Kennedy feel about having this project named after herself? I think she was really proud initially. And then I think she realized that there were expectations um, mm. as she grew older. But I think, um, you know, it was a part of her college essay. Mm. Um, got her into USC. And so I think she really appreciated um, Kennedy's Rosary Project then. When she went to school, my son took it up and had a group at his school doing it as well. So um, I think it's been a family affair Mm. and um, I think it's been appreciated. Yeah. As you're getting the word out to places, who do you find is is responding, um, and and who responds with the highest productivity? Not to make it a competition, but for example, if you we if, never time ourselves because we don't want to get competitive here. No, <laughs> no, I mean like, but like I, maybe not not by time, but by yeah. volume. Let's say um, who who gives who produces the most rosaries for you? Is it is it groups like a Knights of Columbus group or their that was uh, that was like it, a one it, day is it youth group something. stuff? Is it is it like confirmation classes that are doing a project? Is it elementary schools, like? I think the best is the individual, like an individual provider um, who's dedicated. It is their project that they are devoted to and committed to um, because they're going to produce the most consistent product. But Uh, sometimes it's also need drives it, right? Like if we say, hey, guys, um, like when when Sandy Hook happened, which was awful, Mm -hmm. um, we have friends up there and, and we all started nodding green rosaries. And we offered him at all the funerals. 
Mm. Um, and so my friend Michelle, ba- our friend Michelle Babiak, who was also part of the beginning of this, like she oh, couldn't Michelle even move was her part hand. Of the beginning of this? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's she awesome. couldn't even like use her hands by the end of that because we'd need literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. Yeah. So sometimes it's the whatever the need is. You know, we hear from a hospital they they need something. Then you know that that drives folks getting or we've got a big event coming up. You know, World Day of Prayer or you know Lords in a Day or something. So sometimes that's what drives it. Okay. But it is a nice thing to gather around. You know. So. Yeah. It's an easy one too, in terms of like, it didn't take, I remember watching the high school kids that we were with in Lords. It didn't take them long to figure this out. And then some of them were really good at the, at the crossbars and some of them weren't. So the ones who were good at the crossbars, they give it to me and they'd finish off the crossbar for the, for the other kids. And it was, it was impressive. We had a good assembly line going. Absolutely. Some of the kids definitely started competing though. <laughs> I, I may or may not have contributed to that, but they, they, they did start to compete a little bit to see who could make the most. One of our seminarians this summer kind of became the dom of the rosaries. He liked to hold all the finished ones and everybody came to him to give, collect them, to give them out. It was very funny. Um, but yeah, no, some, t- some of the kids were doing 20, 20 in a day, which is crazy. They did get a little too excited. Um, but we actually almost ran out of twine this summer. I mean, we will take... 20 to 30 spools, and each spool is about 63, although you get less out of some of them. Some of them aren't, mm-hmm. aren't as big. But... Now, to keep the consistency yep. as you make the candies, so mm-hmm. the candies are the small batches of, of the twine that you put together for people, um, do you have a method? Is it, is it measuring each one? Like, what's what's how, how are you making this happen? Because there is a consistency here that is uh, pretty incredible, and yet it's definitely not machine-made. So uh, that's another Holy Genius. Spirit thing. Originally, we were putting pieces of tape on a table that were 70 inches apart and using a candle, which was ridiculous. So Holy Spirit said, that, is, that isn't going <laughs> to work for me. So he yeah. you know, inspired this. Uh, you take one of the large boards you get Home Depot. You cut four inches out of the middle, and then you have two boards that perfectly work for wrapping an entire spool around, and you get all your rosaries done in 20 minutes. So you um, you tape on the end, you wrap, 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 which is also really fun to unspool these guys. is a blast. You just, it's like, woo, it's fun. Um, and then you wrap it around, you're putting on some rubber bands, and you're using a soldering iron, and, and the whole spool's done in 20 minutes. Soldering iron. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So this is That got sounds some, like fun. Some, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's very rewarding as you burn through each line of twine along the way. Yeah. Yep. Someone's going to do the hot knife, but they've got to learn how to space them out first. Someone's going to invent that. We're just not there yet. Yeah. <laughs> and they all have different names for the twine. And and do you want to tell them about uh, people colors? About that it actually made it to the Pope? Yep. Wow. Uh, I think, oh, I think yeah, you, you have this. that story. You have that one. So Tony McLaughlin is, is one of the gentlemen who originally came with us to Lourdes and then became someone who um, received his medal. And so he went worked every year. This is an older gentleman. Okay. And so we would just... When, when you say received his medal... What, hospitality. What? He's a member of the hospitality. Okay. That takes five years of stage work and then... And um, what is that? The hospitality. So the hospitality is the volunteer organization that runs Lourdes. I see. Okay. Um, and it it's people from all over the world and, and they're doing it all the time Lourdes is open, which is really impressive. Right. Um, so in order to become a member, you need to do five years of stage training. Um, and then you can choose if you're going to have your engagement, which is where you get your medal. So, um, engagement, engagement, engagement. You're you're making a commitment to come back to Lords whenever you can. Wow! Every year of the rest oh, of your we life. We talked about this with Marlene. We did. Yeah. 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 It was the fancy French accent that threw me off. <laughs> yes, I have a very <laughs> fancy French engagement. accent. Engagement. So, um, but Tony also in in his the rest of his life, um, he was a curator for the Vatican Museum Art Museum, I think. Wow. Okay. So, um, he was at the Vatican one day meeting with someone else, not with the Pope. Mm-hmm. Um, and with this woman, he offered her a rosary because we used to just we would supply him with rosary. She wasn't a knotter. He was one of the people who loved to give them out. Um, and she said one minute, and she she went in the other room, and then she came back, and she said, "You're gonna you're gonna meet the Holy Father." And he's like, "Oh." Uh, <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yeah, you don't hear that very often, do you? Yeah. No, you no. don't. And, and he said, can I give him a rosary? And she said, yes, that would be fine. And the only other rosary he had was papal colors. As it happened. As it happened. Right, yeah. Huh. Isn't that pretty cool? Yeah. Which which pope was this that he got to meet? Uh, our current pope. Okay. Yeah. Pope Francis. Great. Was it, is it cool? Yes. Is it surprising? Not really. Right? What? No, meaning like that he ended it up with the papal colors. Yeah. It was meant to be. Well, I mean, we like, had plan. many, many colors of twine, like 40 different colors of twine. So it could have been anything. 
And I just mean I'm not surprised the Holy Spirit pulled. Oh no no no, no not at all not at all. That's that's one of those divine appointments. Ah, yeah. 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 Like, are you starting a new one over there? All right, that's it. I gotta I gotta learn how to do it now. Now I gotta learn live on the air here. <laughs> all right, do you want me to come over and work with you? <laughs> yeah, yes. let's let's record <laughs> this change? lesson. <laughs> we'll switch let's spots. let's see how this all. All right, so I think I screwed oh. it up already. No, you no, didn't. it's not possible. All right, but I would recommend. A failure, and he'll never. Learn. I don't know. How about we work with that green one? Just... If it gets the rosary done, I do not have to take my finger out. That's it. I'm willing to give up this finger I'm for this rosary. Sure. Wow. You're gonna need to make another. Look at knot. him. He's putting his whole his yeah. whole body on the line for the. This sake is of... the new one knot rosary. Our brother, I know the So now from the back. You gotta watch what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. See, attention, people, attention. Not a strong. No, definitely not. Hasn't oh, been really? since he was in high school. Yeah. All right. It, so you might have a. Much. You might be one of our other jobs. Now, you see, they're <laughs> we're putting you on packaging <laughs> duty. Yeah. That's it. Or maybe Sorry, you're on the... This is gripping audio, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it, and then the second knot. Okay. So... Ladies and gentlemen, I can do this. Anybody can do this. You can That's do for it. Sure. I have, I have it. total confidence in you, man. I mean, some confidence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like a, like a uh, 45 percent confidence. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I... It's true. Your your first rosary had extra graces in it, so whoever you really? can, absolutely, there's all sorts of suffering in this rosary. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, our suffering. That's yeah. right. Because there's all sorts of learners out there too, so you yes. need them. For example, good learners, bad learners. No. <laughs> <laughs> well. It, we were we see, were at see how Christy has to so carefully choose her words to do this. Well, you know, it's some bad learners. No, we went just. Father, I'm coming for you. <laughs> Competitive rosary oh, making is, brought to is, you by. You're going down, son. <laughs> I always find on the bottom, okay. my fingers are too fat to actually make the the full four loops around. So I have to make three and then make one more. At so the bottom or two more at the bottom. I was supposed to be making four loops this no, time. No, 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 that's okay. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, so that's, that's my fault throwing you off. I shouldn't. I challenged you and you immediately went to sabotage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's how threatened I am. Right oh, there. my. Man, I am loving this. You're doing a great it's, job. It's really cool, isn't it? I'm so glad I picked it up 40 minutes into the interview. <laughs> <laughs> well, it does take a little focus. It does. Okay, I'm watching. It I'm was with a series you. of ten you needed to complete. Yeah, exactly. It That's was awesome. It was, How it was old very is she? serious. She's three. I'm twenty six. <laughs> and we're very proud of you. Very proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> so you're gonna make an S first. Do you, okay. do you see that? Sparazo. No, I'm sorry. It went underneath. <laughs> That's for Sam. But yeah. <laughs> sorry. I, I'm sorry. I stopped paying attention. That's my fault. <laughs> What? Welcome to the tangent. <laughs> this, is, this is what we do. Well, while you're trying to figure that out and, and end it, I think Matt, we should uh, we should stop recording here. Yeah, um, but this has been great. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us. Can we for, just for ask on. for prayer for all the rosaries going out right now and for all the folks nodding? Is we sure right? can. Is that okay? Do, do you want to pray together on this or? Uh... Sure, if you want to lead it. We'll yeah, pray sure. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Lord, as these rosaries go out, may all who receive them and all who pray with them. Know the intercession and the protection of the Blessed Virgin Mary. May these rosaries be a sign of love and care, of support and accompaniment to all those who receive them and all those who will pray with them. And we ask this through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary as we pray. Hail Mary, Mary full, full of, of grace, grace, the Lord, Lord is with thee. Blessed, blessed art thou among women, women and, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mother, Mother of God, God pray, pray for us sinners, sinners now, now and at the hour of our death. death. Amen. Christy and Liz, thanks so much for being with us today this thank is great yeah. this is thank fun. you and thank you. you there you go yeah lordy season <laughs>